Hey guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and uh, back with you on the 24th of November 2021. And today I've got another kit review for you. Yes, I've been buying more kits, or a kit. Um, if you're wondering what's happened to the Lancaster, the 48 scale build, uh, as some of you will know, I've got a stinking cold. The build has been halted because I can't do the fine photo etch work I need to do in the cockpit. Um, and also now my Vodal Bond super glue, which I recommend thoroughly. Uh, this has got a manufacturing date of July 2020. I bought it November last year. I just checked on eBay and I bought it November the 10th last year. So it's been opened straight away and it's been used for over a year and it's suddenly started to go off. As you can see, it hasn't gone thick and gloopy, but it doesn't seem to dry quickly. Um, it's, it seems to be taking minutes rather than seconds to dry. So that's a general indication with super glue is starting to go off. If you are gluing large areas or non-critical areas or whatever it's absolutely fine but when you start putting stuff in cockpits you want you, you really don't want it falling off you know because you can guarantee it'll be absolutely fine until you glue the canopy on and then all your instrument panels start falling apart and everything so don't take the chance always make sure your super glue is good um but sometimes it can work to your advantage if it's gone off a little bit and uh you know, it hasn't gone glue pee and it takes a little bit longer to dry. So um, I'm not going to chance it on the Lancaster. So I've got some new super glue coming from Ed over at Premium Hobbies. And this time I'm going for the Rocket CA. I'm going to give that a go. I've never used it before. Um, I think the Zap super glue is absolutely amazing, but I can't stand the bottles. To me, always, the, the, the tops always, I don't, I'd rather have the screw on lids. So um, anyway, enough waffling. So what are we going to look at today? We are going to look at this. And this is the... 130 second scale, light reflecting, A26B Invader from Hobby Boss. Now, I'm going to do this review um, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of talking and waffling up front. So what I'll do, if you look at the comments down below and here, you will see in the, not in the comments, but in my title uh, where I talk about it, I will put a time note in there of where the actual you know, where I open the box and start doing the review. So if you don't want to listen to all the rubbish I talk beforehand, then um, then you can fast forward to there. Some people like it, some people don't. So, you know, can't please all and everyone, can you? So basically, the A26B um, Invader, it was actually uh, out there to replace the A20 Havoc. Um, and it apparently, apparently did a very, very good job. Um, it, it was after the war, it was called the B26. But don't get this one confused with the Marauder. There's the Martin B26 Marauder, which is a, a beautiful looking aircraft. No one's done it in 30 seconds scale yet. I would imagine it's going to be Hong Kong models that will probably come out with it. Or maybe Hobby Boss will surprise us. I don't know. But um, not to be confused with that. But the A26 Invader, beautiful aircraft. Very, very fast. Uh, if you look over on Paul Budzik's channel... Uh, scale model workshop. He's uh, done some work on it, an eight in the forty-eight scale, a very old monogram kit, and done some corrective work on that. And he's got some video on there. And also, you can go over on Kermit Weeks channel, and you'll see over the years, it's like nearly twenty years now. He's having one of these restored, and it is beautiful. Um, and it would be some great reference material for you if you have actually got this kit, because he has that, that marauder he's got is actually an A twenty-six B. Um, it's from the Ninth Air Force in Europe. And he's got all the different noses to go on it. And it is just like this box front. It's beautiful. And he's going to do it in olive trap. Um, so yeah, there's the uh, B variant, which has the gun nose, as you can see here. And it has six or eight cannons, or six or eight guns, should I say, 50 cals. Um, the six configuration is not the same. as You don't just take the top two guns off or whatever. Um, but the eight configuration, I think, was later. And if you have the eight guns, I think you should have the wing guns as well. Um, whereas if you have the six, the six guns, you'll have the underwing guns, which come with this kit. You don't have to use them. But um, Hobby Boss seem to have got their references a bit messed up with this one, and we'll go into that as well. So, um, and then very basically, you've got, you've got, you have a 20 millimeter or 37 millimeter cannon also available in the nose. Uh, there's also the C variant, which Hobby Boss have also done now, which comes with a different um, canopy. It's got the bulged canopy. It's more slender looking. This is called the flat top. Um, and then you've got the, it's got a glass nose on it. Um, and it's actually with a bomb aimer sits in there and everything. Very much like a B25. But I have actually looked at that kit and it does look like they've really messed up the shape of the nose. Um, so, you know, pays your money, takes your choice. But then, you know, it's a, 
if it looks like a duck and it sounds like a duck it probably is a duck so we're not going to get too much into that but I am going to talk about some inaccuracies with this kit um, <clears throat> so yeah first delivered in September 43 to the Pacific Theater and entered service in June um, 44 um, the General George Kenny Kenny was in charge of the uh, the group that were using it and he actually, after a couple of test flights, he actually said, we do not want the A26 under any circumstances as a replacement for anything. So they were that pleased with it. Apparently the engines were more forward on this than they were on the uh, A20 Havoc. And actually it made it absolutely useless for groundwork, for ground support. Um, although they did start to use it along with the A20 later in the war, but um, they didn't want it as a replacement for anything. So the A26 was sent to Europe, um, September 44. Uh, 9th Air Force had them, which is where Kermit Weeks comes from, um, and they were really happy with it, and it replaced all their A20s. Uh, it also succeeded in Italy, where it was based in the US Air Base over there. And then in 1950, it was used in the war in Korea. And then in 1960, they were sent to Vietnam. So I believe this is the only military aircraft to ever serve in all th in three wars. You know, I, I don't think there's any other one that did it. Um, it may be the only twin-engine aircraft bomber or whatever. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, it's a very, very interesting aircraft to research. Um because there are all sorts of different configurations. As I say, you've got the glass nose, the gun nose, you've got the, the actual in-gun wings, you've got the guns mounted under the wings, you've got the upper turret, or you've got a fuel tank, you've got the lower turret, or not. Um, there's lots and lots of bits and pieces, and if you really want to make an accurate model of the, of the model you're depicting, then you really need to do your research, because there's lots of different variants and stuff. But it's worth bearing in mind, you've got the eight guns on the front there, you could have four cannons each side on the wings there, and then you can have the upper turret fixed forward and controlled by the pilot. So you imagine that coming at you. You've got eight and eight, that's 16. You've got 18, um, 18 50 cals firing straight at you. I did read somewhere that it was 22, but I can't see where the other four come from. So you've got eight there, you've got four in each wing, so that's another eight, so that's 16, and then there's, there's uh, two up there, so that's 18. So yeah, could be um, quite scary. Um, so that's that. Now, basically, uh, before we get into the kit, I want to talk about some accuracy issues, and I'll also mention them as we go through. But um, as far as I know from what I've been looking at, the eight nose gun, the eight gun nose, should I say, <laughs> is it or not? Uh, the cockpit, we'll talk about that when we look at it. This, the cockpit has got some issues. Uh, there is no lower turret, so it's a shame they didn't give us that. Um, but it's funny, there's a lower periscope. But there's no upper periscope, and there is an upper turret. <laughs> yeah. Um, engines, we'll cover that when we get there. The fuselage shape, apparently the shape of the fuselage is all out when you look at it nose on. You've got the wing root position, apparently is all out, so it's all too low. Uh, there are no exhausts in the kit, which is a Hobby Boss favourite. They made the same mistake with the P61. The air, in air intakes on the wings are apparently all out of shape for a B, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the periscopes as well. And there's probably a few other bits and pieces and stuff, but I'm not going to get into rivet counting. I'm just going to talk about the actual, um, the errors, as in, you know, obvious biggies. You know, so if you're building an A26 from the Second World War, and it's an early one, you know, it's a September 44, it won't have an eight-gun nose, for example. And then, you know, the shape of the wings and all this and that, whatever. So we'll start the review now, so if you've gone fast forward, welcome aboard. Um, all I've done is talked about the history of the aircraft and talked about the errors, which we'll talk about when we actually look in the box. So the kit is, um, as I say, 30 seconds scale, recommended for 14 upwards. The reason I've bought it, um, it is apparently, according to, I forget his name, over at uh, Metro Hobbies, brilliant um, YouTube channel, if you go and have a look on there, they do a lot of reviews, I think they're down in Australia. Uh, he's got one, and he said, as a kit, as a model going together, it is absolutely stunning. And what really impressed me, he had his engine nacelles, uh, undercarriage bays, and engines and everything all built up. And he went, look at this, and he, and he just snapped it all apart. It was like snapped together. And the fit of everything was absolutely amazing. He was commenting, what a fantastic kit it is. Never mind the inaccuracies, never mind the subject. As a model kit, it is a joy to build, apparently. So looking around the box... We've got here on the side of the box, we've got two, uh, two um, versions in the box. 
So you've got this one here, which is US Air Force, and that one there, I believe, is Indonesian, is it? French, whatever, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, and then we're looking around here, so you can see we've got the decals there. We've got a small, a very small photo etched fret. We've got some information here, all in, I should imagine that's Chinese. So it's made in China, copyright 2020, Hobby Boss. The kit number is 83213, as you can see on the end of the box there. Okay, and then go on the other side of the box here. Oh, we've got a third option there, which again is the US Air Force. Um, and that's, there we go. And you can read that there. I can hold that there, get it out of the light, and then you can pause and you can have a read of that if you like. Um, got some health and safety stuff there. Talk to you to recycle the box, not a toy, 14 plus. So there we go. So looking inside the box, it's the typical Hobby Boss quality packaging you know just like trumpeter i believe the this has been talked about a lot and i've done a little bit of research and i believe that trumpeter are the main company okay and i believe that i love kit and hobby boss are actually manu manufactured by trumpeter so basically hobby boss and i love kit are two individual companies that sub their work to trumpeter that's why it always looks the same okay so as you can see normal sort of end opening book instructions we've got the, the slip of paper here telling you all about the kit you've just bought i don't know why they do that and then here we've got something else this is uh is that korea uh, and that's going to be some kind of missile launcher which looks very nice indeed uh, and then we've got our color call outs for our options we've got option one option two and option three and typical this is something that really annoys me and if you're watching trumpeter hobby boss you never tell us what the options are. If this was Tamiya, or Revell, or Airfix, or ICM, or Italeri, or pretty much any other manufacturer, it would say up here, A26B Invader, 9th Air Force, um, blah, 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 such as such, June 44. You know? And then over here, it would tell you China, Indonesia, whatever. I don't know. I, I don't know what that, that, that um, insignia is there. Um, I know that everyone in the comments will tell me, but um, I believe that's French, isn't it? So yeah, the, the, the options they give you, they're not telling you what they are. So you don't even know what period it's from. But at the end of the day, I've got a feeling that if you, are build, if you want to build an accurate model of any of those three variants, the kit ain't right. So there you go. Um, so we've got our instructions there. But just to look at this, this, I mean... Manufacturers need to take this on board. Look at the packaging. You know, you've got this end here with all these little sprues there individually packaged. You've got your photo etch in there, all in rubber tires, which we hate. <laughs> you've got our separate guns there, and separate sprues there, all packaged. So they're not going to fly around and get, get damaged. We've got our fuselage halves here, and it's been designed, the, the sprues have been designed. So you've got your nose there, and then they sit over there, so that can't all slide around. So you've got your engine pods here, all rubbered in covered in bubble wrap so nothing's going to get damaged you're not going to lose the corners of your wing roots or anything you know we've got foam wrapping down here we've got our clear parts which have not only got foam around them they're in bubble wrap as well you know it's all really really thoughtfully done and um it's something that trumpeter and hobby boss are just absolutely amazing at and you've got a nice strong box and when you compare this to my last review of that Ravel um BF 110 don't get me wrong I love Ravel as a manufacturer I think they're great and if they produce this kit it would be half the price maybe even a bit less um, oh, I did forgot to say I actually got this on Amazon for like a hundred pounds and the reason I bought it is because they do uh, five months interest free so I'm actually I've got credit on this I'm paying 20 pound a month for five months amazing you know what more could you ask for so um anyway so it's yeah it's like £30 off the retail price and interest-free credit for five months. Oh, yeah. So um, we'll get the box to one side and we will have a look in the instructions and then we'll get some uh, sprues out and have a look. So I've got my list of er errors here. So usual, typical sort of hobby boss instruction manual you get with all their kits or their trumpeters. Um, no real history about anything. Uh, no colour, nothing like that. But it is nice matte paper which makes it great for reviewing. So, usual sort of thing here, if I zoom you in a touch, 
Here we go. If I bring you in touch, then we can see things a bit better. So you've got a sprue callouts here. The parts are numbered um, and everything's done lovely. We've got a separate decal there by the look of things. In fact, I don't know where the decals are. They must be in the bottom of the box. I hope they're not missing. So straight into construction, we've got the, the nose gear bay going. And as you can see, we've got separate roof ends and sides. We're going to have some lovely detail there. They're telling us to put the wheel in straight away, the leg. Um, I'm hoping that's not the case. Uh, and it has got a support going in, so it could be that we could round off those pins and actually roll it back and then fit this in, put that, fit that leg in after. So you could actually fit all the undercarriage bay together, pull the leg back in, and then when you've finished, roll it back out. So we shall have to see. Uh, pilot seats here make two. This is where we start to get a bit uh, dodgy. So pilot seats here make two. We've got two control columns. They look very chunky to me. Um, and then we've got our centre console here with some levers and stuff on and we've got some colour call outs which is a nice touch which is something you don't often get in a lot of kits these days so we're going to fit the seats to the floor, we'll fit our centre console we've got the instrument panel there, again we've got issues here um, fitting the control columns, fitting the instrument panel and then fitting the dash fairing over the top and then the rear bulkhead going in there and then going in here, this is going to be the rear gunner, the rear gun, well, not the rear gunner, this is the gun aimer, they're remote turrets, very similar to the B-29, or even the same as the B-29. So the guy sits in here, um, sits on that chair, looks into a, a scope, looking at mirrors, and the periscope's top and bottom showing what the guns are looking at. If you want to see more about that in detail, go take a look at Kermit Week's YouTube videos, and he actually gets in there and shows you all around all the boxes. If you want to build this kit and do it nice, those Kermit Weeks videos are going to be your go-to reference because it's a proper World War II restoration and they're not making any... Obviously, they've got to make radio changes and stuff and there's a couple of changes to some switches because the switches are no longer available. But actually, as the layout of the aircraft goes, it's still World War II. So I want to talk about this cockpit. Um, this is all wrong, OK? Um, now, if you want to build this out of the box and have some fun... All the better to you, fair play, you know. But if you want to build an accurate A26B, the cockpit is all wrong. The layout of the cockpit should be just one seat for the pilot, and then down the um, starboard side, it was just an open gangway for the for the guys to get in and load the guns or get through to the glass nose or whatever. Um, on the right hand side, on the starboard side, it has a fold down seat, very similar to the Lancaster, where the engineer or gun aim or bomb body or whatever can sit for landing takeoff so if you get the Edward cockpit set it's like yay at last Edward are correcting something if you get the Edward cockpit set for this kit it's got everything in there to correct the cockpit and build an accurate A26B cockpit so that's really good news um, you can also I'm actually going to get the the big heads for this because there's a hell of a lot of stuff in there and it's well worth having so here we're going into building up the bomb bays uh, building up the making up the bombs adding them to the sides here more detail going to the sides there We've got a bulkhead going in here. This is going to be the rear bulkhead. Well, it's not a rear bulkhead It's, it's only the bulkhead for the uh, for the front of the bomb bay But the bulkhead there is already on the cockpit panel adding in the nose gear We've got some more bits and pieces going in here and apparently with all these bulkheads going in Apparently the fuselage just goes clips together and absolutely beautiful. It just glues together gorgeously out of side, you've got the bomb bay going in there. All these bits and pieces. You've got the upper turret there. You've got the ammunition uh, on the bottom there. So adding in some more side console detail and then putting all the fuselage halves together. Adding in the bomb bay doors. Adding in the nose gear door. Adding in the nose wheel. It's all a bit of a weird. You're not going to do all this now, are you? You're going to do this after you've painted it. Uh, otherwise, it's just all going to get broken. Now, apparently, there are some issues with the tail, but I don't know. Um, and then we've got our upper gun turret here going in. Apparently the upper gun turret has some shape issues. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> got ammo belts there, which is a nice touch, but it's all going to get covered up by the uh, the capping anyway on the turret. Um, you got your canopy going on here. It looks like they've got no options. I think these fold open. I can't remember now. And then you've got your nose going on. This is the eight guns going in here and then the nose going on. Apparently there is one issue with the kit. The only fit issue with this model I've just been reading is when you actually put the nose on, it is slightly larger than the fuselage, so it needs to be sanded back. But hey, you know, we're modelers, not, uh, not assemblers. Engines. Engines going together here. Very, very simple. You've just got uh, one bank there at the front. And then um, you're going to add, sorry, you're going to make, 
what they say, okay, so you've got there's your rear bank, there's your front bank, and then you're going to put the two banks together, and then they're going to go onto the rear bulkhead. You're going to add your gearbox and your magnetos, bang that into the back of the um, back of the cowling, and then add your prop and everything. Job done. Big problem here. If you look on here, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cylinders making a 14 cylinder engine, which is an R1820, I believe, which is not correct for this aircraft. The, that engine is correct for a Liberator or a Wildcat, not for this aircraft. This aircraft should have our 2800s, okay, which are in the F4U Corsair. You've got them in the P47. You've got them in the P61. Yeah, you've got them in the P61, which Hobby Boss also made in 30 second scale. So here are the frets or the sprues for that engine. So Hobby Boss already had these molds for the correct engine for this aircraft. These are the P61 molds and they didn't use them. They made the wrong engines for this aircraft. So if you've got two of these, okay, you could get the, the correct 2800 engines and then you could use these to replace the god awful engines that are in the B24. Pays your money, takes your choice. So, um, here we're going to make up some more bombs. They've put 10 bombs in the bomb bin, I believe. Yep, five in that side and five in the other side. So that's um, 10 50 pound bombs. Sorry, sorry, 10 500 pound bombs. So that's 5,000 pounds, and I believe that's about the capacity. So we've got some more bombs here being made up. I don't know what's going on. We can have bombs on the wings. Um, so here's the main gear bay being built up. You've got the main undercarriage legs. Uh, funny, they've got a little extension. The undercarriage leg has been made in two pieces, which is a bit of a shame. Probably drill that out and put some brass in there. Put the two sides together. Enter this into the engine nacelles. Close it all up. And this is what the guy on Metro Hobbies had all built up. And it was all just clipped together. Um, we've got to make some holes in our wings. Be careful what you're doing. Check what you're doing before you do that, because you may not want to fit the gun pods. Apparently, these gun pods are too small. I don't know. Um, I'll have to do a bit of research on that. But we've got some... Um, Landing lights going in here, you've got a splitter going into that air intake, which apparently is incorrect. And then we've got separate elevators and ailerons, which is a nice touch. And then we've got, apparently there's also an issue with this, the ailerons have the tabs moulded at an angle. So when you put them in, they're both down. Here you go, you can see it here. You can see here, both your ailerons are down. <laughs> what? So that's not correct, as we all know. So just cut the tabs off, glue them in straight, or glue them in on. You know, they, they should one up, one down. They shouldn't be like that. Um, adding the engines. As I say, got these gun pods here going in, or you can put bombs in there. So they're on pylons already, I'm guessing. So um, adding the engines onto the wings, and then putting the wings onto the fuselage, adding the tail and the rudder. You've got separate control surfaces all over this thing, which is a really nice touch. So you can have them all poised and everything. You've got a light going on there, which is a very nice touch. The wing roots, as I've mentioned earlier, apparently the wing roots are too far down and the actual shape of the fuselage is out. Um, apparently they've got the fuselage kind of... I'm going to do one of my drawings, which you all know I'm famous for. Apparently the fuselage, if we look at one half, so this is the, the centre around the fuselage, apparently it's very much like this kind of thing. Okay, and it should be more like that. Okay, so they've really, really, they've, they've sort of rounded everything off. So apparently it's way off. But, you know, as we say, you, you can go so far into all this. Is it correct? Is it, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. If you want to build an A26, at the end of the day, it's going to look like an A26. And if you do a lovely job of it, no one's going to knock your model because it's not the right shape. OK, so but if you really are a big fan of the A26 and you just cannot stand to look at it like it is, you've got a lot of work to do. A bit like me with the B17, I cannot look at the HK Models B17 with its round nose and its canopy sat up in the air. I cannot look at it. I have to change it. Somebody pulled me on my video that I did where I talked about modifying bits and pieces and said that, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't. People go out and spend a lot of money and I go and tell them that, you know, their, their kit is wrong. I mean, it's a fact, you know, most most people in, like being told, most people enjoy seeing me change things and everything like that. If, if you don't like what I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, 
uh, but perhaps don't watch my reviews if I'm talking about doing changes and stuff to kits. But um, end of the day, you know, I haven't seen one of these built, but the plastic looks lovely and the kit, as I say, is amazing. I'm going on rumours, but uh, it looks just absolutely stunning. So let's stop waffling and have a look at some plastic. Okay, so I've got everything all sort of, all the bags cut open, everything, so we're having a good look without you having to listen to me wrestle with bags. So we've got the, um, here's the decal sheet. I've had a look online, I couldn't find any information what this is. I think it's in, is it Indochina, is it Indonesia, I don't know. Um, anyway, so there's the decal sheet, as we can see, very, very glossy. Uh, they look like they may be a little thick, I don't know. Uh, my only issue I've had with hobby bus decals is getting them to go into details and stuff and you know if you look back at my Spitfire build I really did struggle with that also they look slightly out on the register if we look at those um, symbols there they look slightly out I think or, or not I don't know um, but anyway I won't be using these because I want to do a World War II olive drab uh, and then here's another little decal here on its own looks like it's probably uh, nose art There we go. Yeah. So this is the uh, for version B. We've got a nose out there. We've got a young lady there um, sitting on a bomb. There we go. So that's the decals taken care of. Put it in that way, it'd be easier. Put them away so they don't get anything spilt on them. Okay, so they can go over there out of the way. Right. So plastic. Let's start with the fuselage halves. As you can see, they're just bagged up. Everything's individually bagged, which is a nice touch. So here's the fuselage halves. You can see it's quite a sizable model. It's a good sort of, and that's a good sort of 12 inches long. Um, very nice rivet detail on here. Very nice indeed. It's also very heavy, and it's lovely plastic, which is going to be we all know hobby bass, hobby boss plastic is a joy to work with. Uh, it looks like we've got some bomb mounts on there. Interior detail on the um, on the fuselage looks very very nice. We've got some ribbing here along the top, which is uh, going to make everything quite rigid. Um, no ejector pin marks that I can see. Looks like we've got these square ejector pin panels here, which is uh, which is good rather than the the circular punched out areas. But um, it's it's very heavy. I did notice the guy on Metro Hobbies. He actually ground all this out to get the back end lighter so you'd add less less nose weight to make it less likely to be a tail sitter but um it's very very nice indeed it's very very crisp very very sharp um as we can see there the surface detail is is gorgeous you see you've got the bigger um, Zeus fasteners there whatever around the wing roots and river detail all over it so very very nice indeed and as you can see, we've got internal detail there for everything. So, yeah, it's lovely. This area back here is where the rear gunner sits. Down here, you should have the, well, you not should have, you, there's, there's the rear, the um, ventral turret. Now, the ventral turret was often removed because it was thought to be not good for ground attack. Uh, so they removed it and put a fuel tank in there or something. Please don't hammer me for that. I'm not 100% sure, but um, you, you could easily make a copy of the upper turret and put, a, put another turret in there if you want to. There's only a fairing and everything around it. Um, but uh, we'll have to look at that. Um, also, apparently the wing root position here is in the wrong place. It needs to be moved up about four mil, I think, and forward a couple of millimeters. And that would be, again, that would be quite easy to do. Um, whether I do that or not, I don't know. But I believe the Bombay walls are your inner stiffeners for the wing mounting, so you'd also have to correct them as well. But um, you know, as I say, are you going to bother? Probably not. So there we are, that's the, that's the fuselage halves. They look very nice indeed. But they are, as I say, very heavy and very, um, very crisp indeed. So going along here, here's those um, engine nacelles and undercarriage bays. As you can see, wrapped in bubble wrap, beautifully thought out. And very, very nice indeed. We've got the front undercarriage bay inner walls here, which are lovely. And we've got beautiful detail, lovely surface finish on there, which if you're going to use, if you're going to be doing natural metal finish, you want to give this a polish because it's got that sort of air fixy kind of grainy finish to it. But it's very fine, very restrained um, and very nice. 
I'm looking here, I mean, those undercarriage doors, those front nose bay doors are beautiful. No ejector pin marks, beautifully marked, no sink marks. Absolutely gorgeous, really, really nice. Again here, main gear doors, all the detail on there, beautifully done. No sink marks, no sinkage on there anywhere. And then again, you've got the front wheel, wall, um, front wheel bay walls there. And then again on here, we've got that beautiful rivet detail, which is always strained and beautifully done. So again, very nice indeed. I'm going to put that back in the plastic bag, respect to Hobby Boss for doing that. So it keeps all that detail on there, lovely and unmolested. Right, so next sprue here. This is our, um, basically we've got our greeblies and stuff on here. So that's going to be our nose wheel because we've only got one of these sprues. Yeah, our main wheel's on the other one. I've uh, got some seats here. Got some little actual, uh, that's levers there for the instrument panel for the centre console. Let's just bring you in a bit to so get you a bit closer to this actually. There we go. Um, so we've got nose wheel there. We've got an um, antenna pod there. Seat mountings by the look of things. Machine guns. Seat mountings again. Not sure that's a cross member there. Bits and pieces, you've got a control wheel for something or other there. And you can see the guns there with the barrels already moulded on, so you're going to have to drill them out or get yourself some master barrels. They're just 50 cal, so they're easy to get hold of. But yeah, very nice indeed. Um, lovely detail on those guns as well. You can see on there, on the side of those machine guns, some lovely crisp detail on there. But, um... You've got the actual engine cowlings here. Another problem with this kit, the exhausts are missing. So I'm sure somebody will come up with some aftermarket resin exhausts that are just sitting there. But they are quite prominent when you look at it from sort of behind. You can see these, there's sort of three round holes in each, in each, um, in each opening there. You've got the exhaust pipes are sort of welded together. And like, I was going to copy the um, P61 ones, but the P61s are like an oval shape rather whereas these are like three round tubes uh, sticking out so um i'm sure somebody will come up with something for that um so there we go that's that sprue there that's sprue k and yeah very nice indeed so give you a quick run around with some close-up on there so there's some lovely detail It's very nice, very lovely. Nice. Nice to see you, to see you. Nice. So here we've got uh, another bag sprue with some more protective foam. So that's going to be our fin there. And then here we've got our elevators. We can see these moulding marks on the plastic. But I can feel nothing and I can see nothing. It's just literally where the plastic has come together and it meets. This is what happens. The plastic rushes into the tool, into the cavity, and it meets. And that's where it, um, that's where the plastic's rushed in there, rushed in here, and rushed in there and there. So you can see there's the line where it's rushed in there. Okay, you can see that line there. There's the line where it's rushed in here. There's the line where it's rushed in here, and there's the line where it's rushed in there. So obviously that was the major part. And all that is is where the plastic is met. Um, the only issue is if you use some, if you look back at my B52 build, you see on there I used some pretty aggressive primer, and it actually came through the primer and showed up. So uh, be a little bit careful with that. We've got some little greebly pieces here. We've got some boxes and everything. I haven't seen a single ejector pin mark yet. It's absolutely stunning. It's really, really nice. So we've got ejector pin marks in there. But there are no ejection pin marks where they matter. Really, really nice. Very well thought out. You can see there, there's, um, they're not elevators, they're Bombay doors. So you can see there, those plastic markings I was talking about. And you've got the rivet detail in there as well on the doors. And then when you turn them over, you've got all that beautiful panelling detail in there with all the little access panels. Really nice. Again, no ejection pin marks, no sink marks, no nothing. And you can see on here we've got the lovely rivet detail on the on the tail there. And underneath here, again, Hobby Boss thoughtfulness, these are the Bombay sidewalls. So we've got the foam on there to protect them and make them to save the detail being damaged in transit. So uh, other manufacturers should take note of this. This is something that needs to be done. I'm going to put this back in the bag. 
Um, this is something that needs to be done. You need to uh, protect your parts, guys, because you know when they sit in containers all the way from China and they get chucked around in the back of lorries and vans and chucked around in the shops and everything, and all the parts rub together. You know what happens? Like model collect B fifty twos, they rub all the uh, vortex generators off the wings and stuff. So again, so here we are. This is the engine sprue. So there we go. So we've got the cowling on here. This is the rear of the engine with the uh, gearbox and everything on the back. We've got some bomb tails here. Obviously the bombs here. Um, propeller, which looks very nice. Not sure about the size of the propeller. The Hobby Boss Liberator, the propeller was too small. I'm not sure if this one's going to be too small or not. Um, then we've got these engines which are incorrect. Uh, and underneath here we have, there's our wheel. So they've actually put the foam on there to protect the main gear wheel. And then there's the inner of the gear wheel with the brake and everything moulded in. But um, you can see the detail on the engines is, is okay. They're very simple. They can do the wiring loom. And if you're not worried about accuracy, they're going to be absolutely fine. But if you want to add these, you can get yourself a couple of P61 sprues or indeed make the engines up and mould them. But you can see when I put them like this, you can see the difference straight away. Um, there we go. If I put it like that, that'd be easier, wouldn't it? You can see the difference. You know, the, the upper one here, this is the P61, this is the correct engine, this is what they're giving you. And also with the P61, you're getting separate uh, push rods rather than having it all moulded in together like this one is. So you can see that that one, when that goes together, it's going to look a lot more impressive than, than that does. So um should be okay. I mean, I'm not sure about the diameter, if it will go in the cowling and everything. But the diameter looks to be... Yeah, it looks, looks to be the same. We've got some rocker covers to go on here. This is a really nice engine, this one, actually. It's got all the separate rocker covers and crossover tubes and everything. So that's where the error is. That's the um, that's the biggie with this one that everybody shouts about. Um, and apparently the gearbox isn't very nice either on the front. So uh, there's also apparently some issues with the shape of the cowling. Apparently it should be more rounded. It kind of looks all right to me. Um... I don't know, it looks, looks okay to me. And it only comes with a cowl flaps open option, which is very strange, because if they'd left the cowls closed, you may not have noticed the exhausts. But uh, anyway, there we go. I'm going to put this one back in the bag as well, so that none of it gets damaged. Right, so on to the next sprue here. This is our nose. So we've got our eight-gun nose there, which, as you can see, is quite a big old piece of plastic. If I compare it to my hand there, you can see... It's quite big. Looks like the front of a submarine, doesn't it? Russian, Russian sub or something. Um, cockpit floor there. As I say, all of this here is wrong. You can get the Eddard set. You cut all these boxes off and you're going to replace all of it. Instrument panel there. As you saw in the decal sheet, we've got decals for the, uh, or decals for the instrument panel. You can see it's quite nice as it is, but it's all wrong. So um, it, it should only be half of it. It shouldn't be anything on this side. And then you've got the machine guns there. So you've got... Um, you got one, two, three, four, you got eight machine guns there. And they're nicely done with the with the cooling jackets on the barrels and everything. Yeah, very nice. And then there's your forward bulkhead there with your, your eight gun mounts in. Um, some hydraulics there. And there's your control wheels there. Control yokes, bit, bit chunky. They could do with theater down a bit. And there's your center console there with slide molded so you've got detail on all sides. Which is a nice touch. So there we go. So that's all that. Not sure about the shape of the nose. Um, didn't look into that, but I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. So there's that. We're getting down now. Here we've got the. These are our tailplanes, elevators, and undercarriage bays. Uh, we've got some detailed parts here. Not sure what they are. I think that's the back of the or the front end of the undercarriage bays. And we've got some side, well that's like a fuse panel or something for the inside of the camera, inside of the um, cockpit. And then this here is the rear gunner mount. So this has got the periscope going through the bottom. But you can see the rivet detail on those, um, on those tailplanes and elevators is absolutely gorgeous. You can see there we've got the, the elevator and the tailplane there. And then we've also got the same again on another sprue, but it's not a mirror. And then we've got the wheelbase in here. You see the internal detail on the wheelbase. Again, 
You see, these guys can do it. Why can't anyone else? There are no ejector pin marks in there. So, if, um, even Tamiya, if you can get in touch with Hobby Boss and ask them how they do it, please, that'd be nice. But um, they've managed to make that complex surface there with all that detail and all that ribbing and everything. And there's not a single ejector pin mark in there at all. Okay, so take note, people. Very, very nice indeed. You can see the detail on those rivets, on those the rivet detail on those elevators is lovely. And on the flaps. <clears throat> As I said in the beginning, I took the word of the guy over at Metro Hobbies, and apparently it is a beautiful kit to build, and it is beautifully moulded, and it certainly looks that way to me. Um, it's just got its inaccuracies, but pff, hey, you know when you think about inaccuracies. Just think about this. I've been belly aching for years over the B24's wing shape. I go to Telford, I see two B24's on stands, and I ask both the people who built them, have you modified the wing? The mere fact that I had to ask that question means the kit must look okay. So there you go. So here we go, we've got the front wheel bay there, which is gorgeous. We've got some cabling and some pipe work detail again. Again, no ejector pin marks. We've got a bulkhead there. Is that for the front end? I'm not sure if that's for the front undercarriage bay or for the bomb bay. I think it's the bomb bay. Again, no ejector pin marks. We've got some more bulkheads here with hydraulics and stuff on them. Another bulkhead here. Again, no ejector pin marks. We've got the bottom or the, or the top of our elevators here. Our, um, flaps, should I say. We've got tail planes and elevators here. And I'm imagining these are elevators. And what I just showed you back there was the rudder. So um, we shall see. Um... Yeah, I'm sure these are the elevators, and then what I showed you here is the rudder. Sorry, there, there is the rudder. So, uh, again, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at that, look at the roof of that nose gear bay. Look at that detail in the middle there, it's lovely. Really, really nice. Again, no ejector pin marks. So... <clears throat> Very, very nice indeed. Um, <clears throat> wings. These are the lower wings. And they are big old brutes. As you can see, they're, they're quite lengthy. Um, where's my rule? It's 12 inches, but I don't use it as a rule. And they are just over 12 inches long. So they are, what are they, 306 millimetres, 310 millimetres, something like that. So um, it's going to be quite a big old bird. You've got the, low, the landing lights down there, which are very nice. We've got a bulkhead here. This is the mount for the upper turret, which is heavy. And we've got ailerons there. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier, we've got these angled mounting lugs on them, which means they both end up angled downwards. I don't quite know where they got that from. But um, some stiffening detail inside to keep them nice and, some nice and uh, rigid. And apparently there's something wrong with these intakes. I don't know what, but apparently there's something wrong with them. So uh, we'll have a look at that. But anyway, that's the lower wings. Again, you've got all that lovely panel detail, rivet detail and everything in them. All recessed, all very finely done. No, pa you know, no trenches or anything. I was reading earlier, a guy was talking about a particular manufacturer and he said he looked at the kit and he was expecting a TIE fighter and an X-wing to come up out of the panel lines. <laughs> yeah. Very funny. Uh, here we go, and then this is the final grace. Oh no, it's not. We've got some little bits and pieces to look at. So these are the upper wings. Um, this, I think, is a little unrefined. I think that should come in a bit sharper than that, but hey, looks like an A26 to me. Um, beautiful detail. Now we've got the upper sides of the uh, of the ailerons there. Some more bulkheads. Seems to be a assembly of bulkheads here. So we've got here. We've got the bulkhead. There we've got the detail on that side there, as you can see. Which is lovely. And on the back side, you've got this detail on here. And again, we have no ejector pin marks. In fact, I think you'll go through this whole build without having to remove a single ejector pin mark. I think I'll go out on a limb and say that. A little bit of flash on the sprue here, as you can see. But on the parts, there is nothing. Look at the detail on those wing surfaces. They're really, really nice. Apparently, um, looking at Kermit's aircraft, if it had guns under the wings it should have mounting panels in there i think or maybe it has guns in the wings as well maybe that's what it is i'll have to go and look again 
But I, I, yeah, they wouldn't have mounting panels for reloading the ammunition if they had gun pods underneath, would they? I wouldn't have thought. But um, maybe Kermit's has got the guns in the wings as well. But uh, whatever. But, you know, really, really nice. Tiny little bit of shrinkage around here. It's only even worth looking at. It's, it's, there's nothing there at all. It's just, it's just literally a coat of matte paint. You'll never see it. So there we go. And this one will be olive drab and beat up. So there we go. And then finally, or not finally, well, these two sprues here, we'll get them out of the bags. But um, again, that's just like an act the surround for the access hatch, perhaps, or radio gear or something. And then we've got the seats here with some seat frames. Okay, so that's all side molded. Here we've got the gun pods and the upper turret, and we've got our main landing gear there with the brake detail and everything on there, which is a nice touch. Don't know why they've made them in two pieces. Upper turret there. Now, apparently, these gun pods are very small for their size. I'm going to have to try and find out. If somebody can tell me, if anybody knows of one of these in restoration, they can measure them. Just give me the length and the actual width. I can then scale them up. Um, but apparently, the gun pods are, are way, way undersized. So... Uh, worth looking at so that's those so and then we've got in here we've got our rubber tires vinyl tires we will open these and have a quick look even though i won't be using them i've already ordered resin ones from ed so they're groove they're not treaded there's no tire lettering on them they don't smell of rubber they are quite soft but they've got the, the tread on them there there's no real seam line either to talk about, which is a nice touch. But, you know, you've got them anyway, if you want them. So, I personally don't like them, so I won't be using them. It's funny, somebody commented on one of my videos when I did the, um... Was it when I did the 110, I think? Somebody said, you would think these manufacturers would give you rubber tyres. I said, you would think they would, well, most of them do, but most people, including me, hate them. Uh, and then we've got finally here we've got a photo etch, little tiny photo etch fret, and that's some little supports I believe on there for the seats, these little straight ones. And then this is a box I believe that goes on the interior. And that's it. It's just sort of in there. No harnesses, no nothing, which is a shame. So you have to add your own harnesses. And then finally here we have the clear sprue, beautifully packaged in bubble wrap, and then wrapped in foam as you can see here. And I will cut this foam off so we can see just how good the parts are. And if normal hobby boss is anything to go by, they will be stunning. Stunningly clear. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's find something to do the writing test on. Do, 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 do. I've got nothing here with any writing on it. Um... Let's use a premium hobby sticker. So there we go, we can look through there. We can see very, very little distortion. So yeah, your interior, get your Edward set guys. Do your interior nice and accurate, it's gonna look bloody lovely. Um, that's the rear gunner's area there with the escape hatch in the top. And then we've got some landing lights and everything there, which is gorgeous, very, very nice. And it looks like, it's look, is that the periscope cover there? If it is, they've given you two periscope covers, but only one periscope, which is nice because that means we can still do the, um, the periscope. We can still add the periscope that we need. So there we go. But that is uh, crystal clear. Got some lovely, very nice lines on there, so you can easily cut your mask yourself. But I, I'm going to use the big headset, so I'll... I'll have the masking set for this, but um, very, very nice indeed. Very lovely clear parts. So that's it, guys. So that has been the A26B from Hobby Boss. The C is also available, which is a glass nose. Now, I believe it still has all the shape issues we talked about. Um, I'm going to put this in the other way, actually. I believe it has all the shape issues we talked about. I don't think they've made any changes to the fuselage or anything. But it does have a glass nose and it has a different canopy. Now what you could do, if you really are an A26 fan, you could get both. And I believe by cross-kitting, you could make an A26B with a glass nose. 
and then you could make an A26K using the eight nose gun off of here and the canopy and everything from the sea. So I'm not an expert, so please don't fire shoot me down in flames. But um, that's just what I think I've read. So there we go. That's the uh, that's the kit, guys. And if you do want to get these Hobby Boss sprues, they are from the P61 132nd, and they are sprue PB and PA. And the sprue number is 0983206. 83209 so they are both 83209 0983206 and uh, they are sprue PA and PB and obviously you'll need two of each so um, there we are very very nice so thanks for watching hope you've liked that um, I, I'm, I'm going to build this because I love it so much um, I may do a couple of little corrections on let me know in the comments below if you want to see anything and uh, we'll go from there but remember we've got a very big Lancaster arriving shortly so uh, everything will get dropped when that comes. Bye for now, thanks for watching.